Hi YouTube, let's continue with our exegesis of Jihad as defined in the Sharia by Ibn Tamir. Now we are told there are numerous similar verses in the Quran and equally frequent is the glorification of Jihad and those who participate in it. Let's look at this verse. You who believe shall I direct you to a commerce. This is a transaction. When you swear allegiance, when you take the Shahada, you also swear allegiance. It's called Bayah in Islam. And you basically sell your soul, you sell yourself, you sell your allegiance to the leader. It could be the caliph, could be the imam, whatever the case might be. You will make a commerce with Allah that shall deliver you from a painful torment. That is the torment of the grave, hell. And this is a path to paradise, a path to salvation. Jihad is the only guaranteed path to salvation in Islam. That you believe in Allah and his messenger, that's Muhammad, and you make jihad in the way of Allah, that's jihad fi sabil Allah, which is fighting with your wealth and with your lives. Again, jihad is about potentially losing your life. It is killing or being killed in the name of Allah. That is better for you. Allah will forgive you your sins. He will admit you into gardens under which rivers flow and to dwelling places in the gardens of Eden. That is the supreme success. That should be fairly self-explanatory. To earn paradise, lose your life in jihad, Allah will forgive your sins and you will earn rewards in heaven, in paradise. And other things you love, so fine. Help from Allah and victory is near. Victory in this case refers to warfare. Let's look at this verse which tells us just how important jihad is. This verse further reinforces the importance of jihad in Islam. Do you reckon the giving of water to pilgrims and taking care of the holy mosque as the same as one who believes in Allah and makes jihad in the way of Allah? not equal are they in Allah's sight. So one who takes care of pilgrims and one who takes care of the holy mosque is not equal in the sight of Allah as one who makes jihad in the way of Allah. This person is superior. This is the highest sacrament in Islam. Those who emigrated, because emigration as we've spoken about before is a form of jihad. And those who have made jihad in the way of Allah with their wealth and their lives are mightier in rank with Allah. They are the triumphant. So immigration, Muslim immigration, is very much on the same level as jihad. This is spreading Islam. This is taking Islam to the lands of the Kafir. For them await gardens wherein is lasting bliss. Of course, this is not necessarily a reference to uh, the glory of God and a peace which passes all understanding. This is lasting bliss because they are hurus in paradise, 72 virgins. So this is carnal bliss. Surely with Allah is a great reward. And further, be stern towards the unbelievers, fighting in the path of Allah, not fearing the blame of any blamer. You are willing to fight in the way of Allah against unbelievers, and you're not afraid of any recrimination. You're willing to accept this as a price to pay to serve Allah. Yeah, make of that what you will, but that, yeah, I think this is pretty clear. There is no thirst, no fatigue, no emptiness in the way of Allah. That is in the way of jihad. And these people who commit jihad are good doers. These are the good, the good Muslims. And Allah will recompense them. Thus he has mentioned the reward resulting from their deeds. The command to participate in jihad and the mention of its merits occur innumerable times in the Quran and in the Sunnah. It is the best voluntary religious act that man can perform. All scholars agree that it is better than the Hajj which is the pilgrimage to Mecca. Jihad, fighting in the way of Allah, killing and being killed in the way of Allah to spread Islam and against the unbeliever is the best voluntary religious act that a man can perform, that a Muslim can perform. And all scholars agree it is greater than even the act of worship by going to the Hajj. So it is a form of worship. The Prophet Muhammad has said, the head of the affair is Islam. Its central pillar is the Salat, the prayer, and the summit is the Jihad. We can see this is collected by Ahmad and Tirmidhi, so this would be taken from Hadith collection. And he has said, all these Allah has prepared for those who take part in Jihad. So they're speaking of paradise, the rewards of paradise. Al-Bukhari has transmitted that he whose feet have become dust in the way of Allah, i.e. Jihad, Allah will save from hellfire. So the only guaranteed path that a Muslim has to salvation, redemption, is Jihad. To die, to be slain, or to slay in Jihad will earn you redemption and save you from the torments of hell. This is why it is considered such a profound religious act in Islam, because it is the one way that you can serve Allah and he will reward you with paradise.
In the Sahih of al-Bukhari, as well as the Sahih of Muslim, we find a man said, O Messenger of Allah, tell me of an act that equals jihad in the way of Allah. He answered, You will not be capable of it. Muhammad is saying this man will not be capable of fulfilling an act that is equal to jihad. It's not possible for this man to do something that is equal to the act of killing and being killed in the way of Allah. The man said, Tell me anyway. The Messenger of Allah said, Can you, when a jihad warrior has gone out on expedition, fast without interruption, and spend the night in continuous prayer? The man said, No. Then the Messenger of Allah said, This then is what equals jihad. So jihad is an act of worship. It is equivalent to fasting without interruption and spending the night in continuous prayer. That is the word of Muhammad from the Sahih Hadith. In the Sunnah, we find that Muhammad has said, Indeed, every nation has its tourism, and the tourism of my nation is jihad in the path of Allah. Okay, migration, anyone? Migration to Europe? You tell me. The benefit of jihad extends not only to the person who participates in it, but also to others, both in a religious and in a temporal sense. Jihad implies all kinds of worship. More than any other act, it implies love and devotion for Allah surrender of one's life and property to him and an individual or community that participates in it finds itself between two blissful outcomes either victory and triumph or martyrdom and paradise all creatures must live and die it is in jihad that one can live and die in ultimate happiness jihad is religiously more beneficial than any other why if the Sharia is so profound and so amazing and so great and so wonderful and it's the word of Allah and the law of Allah and Muslims want to live by it because the majority of them do. Why don't they come and tell us this outright? Why are we given these mansuk verses, these abrogated, cancelled verses in the Quran which are no longer valid, which are acknowledged by their own scholars to be mistakes that Muhammad made that Allah had to replace with newer verses to correct his errors why don't they give us the Sharia? Why don't they tell us? This man is one of the 24 great scholars of Islam. There's only one guy above them, and that is Al-Ghazali. If the Sharia is so amazing, why aren't Muslims preaching this stuff openly and saying, hey, this is awesome, this is wonderful, this is great? No, they hide it. They're ashamed of it. This is a secret. They don't tell us. They refuse to discuss it. I've tried to engage them in discussion, and they will do anything but talk about it. When you ask them, show me from the Sharia, they will mention some random commentary, some random statement by some random scholar. They will not go to these Sharia manuals and tell us, this is what these say. Everything, as we've seen here, this is derived from legitimate Sharia manuals. This is the authentic Sharia understanding of Jihad. And this is by one of the major scholars of Islam. To continue, the death of a martyr is easier than any other form of death. In fact, it is the best of all manners of dying. So jihad is about dying. It's not about walking your dog a little bit more. It's not about being nicer to your grandma and walking little old ladies across the street. This book just discusses death and killing. Lawful warfare is essentially jihad. And since its aim is that the religion is entirely for Allah, so imposing Islam by the sword, and the word of Allah is uppermost, in other words, Islamic supremacy, according to all Muslims, those who stand in the way of this aim must be fought. Now, what is interesting, if we derive this understanding correctly, it's that they want to impose Islam. If we oppose them, we are oppressing them. And thus, we must be fought for our oppression. That's a little backwards, but this is how they understand this. This is how it's interpreted. And thus, if we try to prevent them, we must be fought. Let me show you this fatwa by Mufti Ibrahim Desai. It's on Islam QA. I have a question about offensive jihad. Does it mean that we are to attack even those non-Muslims which don't do anything against Islam just because we have to propagate Islam? Now the answer given by Mufti Desai is you should understand that we as Muslims firmly believe that the person who does not believe in Allah as he is required to is a disbeliever who would be doomed to hell eternally. Thus the primary responsibility of the Muslim ruler is to spread Islam throughout the world saving people from eternal damnation. What is meant by the passage in Tafsir Uthmani is that if a country does not allow the propagation of Islam to its inhabitants in a suitable manner or creates hindrances to this, then the Muslim ruler would be justified in waging jihad against this country. 
so that the message of Islam can reach its inhabitants, thus saving them from the fire of Jahannam. If the Kafir allow us to spread Islam peacefully, then we would not wage jihad against them. But if we resist them proselytizing and wanting to politically enforce the Sharia and Islam, they must wage jihad against us. So all of those migrants who are coming are A, that's an act of worship, it's an act of devotion, it is a form of jihad, that's what the migration is, and B, we who are preventing the Muslims from imposing Islam on us, we must be fought. I think that's pretty clear. As for those who cannot offer resistance or cannot fight, such as women, children, monks, old people, and so on, the blind, the handicapped, they shall not be killed. Now very often we will get quoted this by Muslims. They will fail to add in all the rest that we've already been through. However, it says they can be killed unless they actually fight with words, e.g. by propaganda. Note that the term propaganda is not very well defined. If they speak out, if they say that, no, we don't want this to happen, that is propaganda, that is resistance, that is oppression, and then they can be killed. And they also speak of acts of spying or otherwise assisting in the warfare. Again, warfare is not very well defined. So they're leaving themselves a large loophole to interpret this in a very woolly manner, which means that any form of resistance could lead to death. Some jurists are of the opinion that all of them may be killed on the mere ground that they are unbelievers. And some people, well, that's what they believe and that's what they will act upon. ISIS was certainly pure in terms of this belief. ISIS were legitimately enforcing the Sharia as written. They were acting strictly according to Sharia. They make an exception for women and children since they constitute property for Muslims. Well, because they become slaves. Under the Sharia, a subjugated people, the men can be killed, but the women and the children become slaves. We may only fight those who fight us when we want to make the religion of Allah victorious. They can attempt to impose Islam upon you. But if you resist that, if you fight back against their imposition, then they're allowed to fight you because you are fighting them, because you started the fight because they attacked you first. Backwards thinking, but this is honestly what Muslims believe. I'll pause there and thanks and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. And again, if you want to support my work, you'll find a link for a contribution uh, to PayPal below. Thanks. Have a good day.